live at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'm Elise Southwell, and this is NASDAQ Disruptors. Today we're talking about the global tech landscape, specifically the triangle that's developing abroad of all the disruptive tech companies. We're talking about the U.S., we're talking about the is Israel, we're talking about China. In the U.S. here we have Google, Facebook, Apple. In China they have Baidu, WeChat, Alibaba. Where will the next big thing come from? We're here with Hagai Tal, CEO of Taptica, to find out why we all have to play a part in scaling out the tech industry. Welcome, Hagai. Good morning. What is Taptica? So Taptica is a platform for a mobile platform for uh, advertisers, mostly T1 advertisers that want to promote their products uh, through a mobile uh, distribution. Um, we have a platform to help them to do it globally. It uh, doesn't matter what the product is. Uh, they can leverage on the platform to, to get to the right user and the right ad. So where is Taptica uh, headquartered? So the headquarters is in Tel Aviv, uh, where it's easy for us to find talent people. But we also have uh, branches around the world, so you can find us in China, in Korea, in Japan, in San Francisco, in New York, and London. So as a tech firm in China, with roots in China and Israel, how uh, are the markets in China and Israel different than U.S. and Europe? Um, it's different uh, mostly by the people, or the DNA of the people, mostly the culture. There's some sort of a hunger in the people that they really want to achieve something. Everything seems like everything is doable. People are trying to develop as much as they can. If they, uh, get, to, uh, they get stuck with something, they try to find a solution to go around it. There's a, there's a definitely DNA of uh, being innovated. And in uh, Israel, you can, you're saying? You can say it in Israel. Now I also see it in China as well. It's, you know, people are fighting to find solutions and to be innovative. They, they, in a way, you can say they see the light and the uh, fruit if they, uh, if they become innovative. Israel really cranks out startups, really successful startups, and China has large scale. So how right. do you see this marriage working or competing with the sort of Western giants, Google and Facebook of the world? <coughs> I think the, the users in China, which is a, which is a huge population and a, and a big uh, uh, growth in terms of uh, mobile penetration, there's a lot of good ideas that are coming from Israel that uh, can find a nice uh, location or nice house in China. Uh, there's a lot of Chinese, a lot of um, investors are coming to Israel to look for good ideas and how to adapt them into China. And we're seeing a lot of companies that they used to be focused on how to go to the U.S. And now they try to fly the different route to China to see how to get to, to that market as well. How is the scale, though, different in China compared to the U.S.? It's, it's bigger than what most people think. Uh, the adaptation of mobile use in China is much stronger than other places. Uh, you can say in a way that there's a lot of, there's a generation of people that pass the, P the use of the PC and they move directly to the mobile. So you see much more people that are adapting the, the mobile, they use the mobile as heavy as people use it in, in the US even more. And also their life is around it. So all the social activity, all the payment, everything is done through the mobile also in China. So mobile tech, you're saying, is just as large or larger out in China? I would take the guess that if it's not larger, it will be larger. And how about the mobile payment space? And, and, and I know that there's a lot of conversation with that in terms of, you know, we have PayPal and, and WeChat integrates, you know, uh, mm -hmm. payments in it. Can you talk to us about that? So because the... Um, in the U.S., there's a lot of credit card activities and there's a lot of wallets activities. Payment in China was behind in the past, so now every, everything goes directly to the mobile. There's no, uh, there's no steps on the way, and the use of the WeChat payment is becoming huge in China. It will be bigger because of the population is bigger. Why do you think that the companies in the U.S. or even people have had trouble getting a foothold in China? That's, it goes back to the two things. It goes back to the culture, and it goes back to the way the government is setting up different things. Here in the U.S., um, you can get access to uh, companies and to clients easily, where in China it's a bit difficult when it comes to culture and connection with people. You know, English is not that uh, um, spoken, good spoken in, in China, where it's changing. There's more and more people who speak the language. There's a lot of effort from people to, to speak the language. They want to, communi to communicate. They want to be connected to what's happening outside of China. Where on the same time, 
uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, effort from companies to go into China and find the routes in China, how to distribute to the local market as well. People understand that it's become it's a huge market and there's a lot of opportunities. So we're and you're saying that Israel is sort of bridging the gap, you know, this cultural gap. Would mm -hmm. you say between China? I would say that Israelis are putting a lot of effort to close the gap quickly. They understand there's a potential out there. They are looking for uh, middlemen that will help them to get into the market. They're flying all over to China all the time. There's a lot of Chinese that are coming over. There's a lot of government effort to help the Israeli companies to get into China. And I think they try to uh, close the gap on the culture as well. So a lot of Israeli companies have a nice foothold in the U.S. They're in Boston, they're in New York, they're in San Fran. Is there an Israeli footprint in China, in Beijing, Shenzhen? It's not as much as in the U.S., but if we'll meet again in two or three years, I'm pretty sure that will be the case. It will be the same. Speaking of Shenzhen, there has been some information out there that Shenzhen is almost like a uh, Silicon Valley, a mini Silicon Valley. I mm. actually think I read something that said it was called Silicon Dragon, which was <laughs> great. Can you talk to us about that? I think it's the same, uh, it's the same uh, ecosystem. It's the same ecosystem of entrepreneurship. It's people are moving from one company to another. It's people that uh, produce a new product and share it with the others. People don't hide anymore in terms of, I did this, but I don't want anyone to know. People are sharing the information, what they do. People are trying to uh, educate one another how to grow the whole ecosystem because now they understand it's a benefit for everyone. How is it running a company for, out of Israel and China and doing a lot of business, obviously, with New York companies or U.S. companies, I should say? So it's like the British says, the sun never goes down, right? So you always have someone who's up and running and running the business. Um, it's challenging, but the best way to do it is by you know, having a strong management team that helps you to run it, and you have people, good people on the ground in different locations. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the solution. And you think that you are overcoming any sort of cultural differences because you're sort of in the, in the middle of this? Uh, I want to say something different. I want to sure. say that we, we create culture. Okay. We create a new culture. I think companies, uh, global companies, are basically the companies who create cultures today. We're adopting a bit from the local culture. We're adopting a bit from different countries, but we're creating our own culture, which help us to maneuver in this, uh, in this uh, globalization. Now, here at NASDAQ, we're not only an exchange. We're a global think tech company. We power so many markets. If you had to give your predictions on the global tech innovation, mm -hmm. talking about Israel, China, U.S., everybody working together, what would your predictions be for 2017? I would say that... Uh, the Chinese will play a role in that. I would say the Israeli market will grow definitely. Some more ideas will come. I would say um, that the use, the growth, is going to come from the, a lot of people in China adopting new things that have been created outside of China and also inside of China. Okay? And also inside of Israel, there's a lot of good ideas going to be adopted in China as well. So you're going to see a lot of mix okay, from different places. And I think um, we're going to see things, new things coming from China into the U.S. market. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Hagai, thank you so much for being here and talking to thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I'm Elise Southwell, and this is NASDAQ Disruptors.